Montana, the gentlelady from the ranking member from New York is acknowledged. I thank the chair. Um, now, I want to quickly touch on uh, Representative Stauber's permit MN bill uh, that is being discussed today that would update our mining laws to largely favor mining interests. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle have suggested here and in other forums that environmental review is a key bottleneck in developing critical resources and that reforms to the National Environmental Policy Act are necessary, that it creates all of these headaches and there's all these issues in NEPA um, and we need to really streamline it and um, reopen it for, for editing and review. Um, Mr. Nolan, you are the CEO of the National Mining Association. Uh, do you know what percent of NEPA decisions have a significant enough environmental impact to require an environmental impact statement? Uh, I don't have that, but I'm happy to get to the committee. I'm sure you may have it in front of you. I, I would say, though, that just about every EIS for a modern mining project is challenged in court mm -hmm. after the decision is made. Uh, I see here uh, the GAO estimates it's about 1% of all NEPA decisions require an EIS. And uh, do you know how many of those NEPA decisions require an environmental assessment? Uh, the GAO methodology is, is uh, somewhat suspect because that EIS component uh, is limited and that sample size in that report uh, is something I'd like to further discuss. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, given that, I, I, I register that, but of that 1%, we're also, top of that 1%, we're also seeing that the estimates are less than 5% of all NEPA decisions requiring an EA. And specifically when it comes to hard rock mining, Mr. Nolan, the industry says it takes roughly 10 years to permit a mine. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I'd also like to introduce uh, to the record a GAO report that shows hard rock mines average, in, in their assessment, average about two years uh, to permit. And so when we talk about permitting reform, uh, which in the case of this bill guts a lot of environmental review, what we really, I think, should be focusing on is the more than the $1 billion in the Inflation Reduction Act uh, to increase federal agency capacity for those environmental reviews, which you know, I think would actually speed up time. But I wanna turn now to questions around royalties for hard rock mines. Uh, Mr. Nolan, how many abandoned hard rock mines are there in the United States? Uh, hundreds of thousands, men. Yes, and um, according to uh, another report, we're looking at over more than 400 thousand abandoned hard rock mines in this country. Uh, also, according to that same study, cleaning up these abandoned mines costs billions upon billions of dollars. These abandoned hard rock mines currently have no source of funds for cleanup at all. And that means that the communities nearby these abandoned mines are left with the burden, the burden of toxic waste and pollution, and the burden of paying for that cleanup themselves if it ever even does get cleaned up. And those communities are very often indigenous, low income, or already over, overburdened. The toxic health effects of these communities can be generational. In fact, a quarter of Navajo Nation women today have extremely high levels of radioactive uranium in their bodies, decades after uranium mining stopped on the nation's lands. And their newborn babies have equally high levels of toxic uranium. Uh, Mr. Nolan, do you believe that uh, the public, public funds um, and taxpayers should be responsible for paying for the remediation of these sites? And do you believe that these overburdened communities should be left with uh, this mess that they didn't make? Uh, I would say that the legacy of abandoned mines is something we all need to work on. Modern mining did not create this mess. Uh, you mentioned 20 years, two decades ago. Um, but we are working in partnership with this committee and the NGOs to address the problem whether it's Senator Heimrich's addition of $6 million mm -hmm. in the uh, bipartisan infrastructure law or our partnership with Trout Unlimited to put mm -hmm. forward bipartisan Good Samaritan legislation, we would like to continue to work with the committee to address AMLs. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And would you support a royalty of some kind to help give Americans a fair return for mining companies' production of publicly owned minerals and to help fund the cleanup of some of these abandoned hard rock mines? 
Certainly, we've been on the record as uh, supporting a fair return to the public, but uh, we believe that that has to be done carefully right now. Our total tax uh, contribution is that that is similar to our global competitors. And at the time, we're trying to incentivize the electrification of the economy and bring these mineral projects forward. We mm -hmm. have to do this very carefully. And are you aware that in this bill, there isn't any such kind of royalty of this kind? I am. Okay. And with that, I yield back. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I am going to yield uh, for questioning in his round one.